Hey everyone! So today I wanted to do a video about all the tools and supplies you would need to customize a Blythe doll. And this is my website in case you want to check out some previous dolls I've customized. They're under the Lavish Studio tab. Um, okay, so obviously first thing you need is a Blythe doll. Uh, you can get a factory one or you can get, um, you know, a genuine Blythe doll. Uh, the factory ones are obviously a lot cheaper, but, um, you know, the quality's not the same. Like, the eye holes are a little bit bigger, so you can kind of see the side uh, mechanism. Um, a lot of them have these jointed bodies, and there are lots of different places online you can buy them. You can buy them on eBay, you can buy them on AliExpress, uh, Wish.com, I think. You know, so just... You have to kind of shop around and figure out what makes the most sense to you. So this is a factory one, like I said. I haven't started customizing genuine ones because I'm still trying to like kind of, you know, uh, get better with it before I <laughs> start on genuine dolls. So you get this doll and um, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take it apart. So I'm not going to actually do this right now because... Um, you know, that, that might be for a different video and that would be too much. So you need, you know, let's say like, um, you know, like a little screwdriver or a different type or whatever, but basically anything that fits into these. Once you unscrew them, and there are YouTube videos on how to do this, once you unscrew it, you kind of press the sides because there are little tabs that go into each other. You press the sides and then it kind of pops open and you can take it apart. So once you've taken the doll apart, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to, or this is, well, this is how I do it. So <laughs> there's probably, you know, a million different ways that people do this. But first thing I do is carve the face. And to carve the face, I purchased a couple different tools. Um, some people use these X-Acto knives, uh, but I don't really do that. I purchased these wood carving tools. So it was a set on Amazon. And um, they're basically for carving wood, but they also work just as well on plastic. So, um, and there are YouTube tutorials on how to carve their face as well, but really it just comes down to, you know, practice and trying things out and, you know, kind of, there's no really... You know, you, you're not going to watch a video and immediately know how to do it. You have to, it's kind of like art, you know, you sort of can watch videos, but the only way to really get it is to try it yourself and to like practice it and, you know, um, keep working on it. And then the other thing I purchased was these little files. These are just regular files. So um, this was a set of files that I purchased. So then um, the other thing to think about is that you can also purchase a Dremel or, you know, something cheaper like this that I found on Amazon. It came with all these little attachments. Um, a Dremel might be better quality, but this was cheaper and it's very light. So the reason I ended up purchasing these, even though a lot of people who customize dolls will tell you not to purchase these because if you... Um, kind of go too fast or not paying attention, you can put a huge dent in the face. And that is actually true. Uh, you have to be very careful when using these because it's very easy to ruin the face. However, after carving with my hands, um, my hands started to really hurt. So it was basically a matter of purchasing one of these to ease some of the process or just kind of give up customizing. So I went ahead and purchased that. Um, okay, so now that's all the stuff for having your doll carved. Then I have this huge box of various sandpaper. So this is basically sandpaper because a lot of it too is not just carving it, but then sanding down the dents that you've made in it. So. Um, and that can be a huge part of the process and takes quite a while. It's a lot of work. So, um, I don't know if 
you guys want to see. You you want some like various types of sandpaper. This is some like 1000, then I have some 600. Like there's just different um this is 400. So there are different ones and so you would start obviously with slightly rougher paper and move on towards fine super fine paper to make the the face as smooth as possible when you're done with it. So the next thing you're gonna do once you're done with that is um, spray it with Mr. Super Clear and you wanna purchase the UV cut one. Um, there are other things that people use, but I think this is kind of the most preferred one. Uh, it's not cheap, you have to shop around. Um, Amazon does sell it, it's by Mr. Hobby. So you spray the face, and I also sprayed the back plate because I like to draw on the back plate as well. Because if you don't, the supplies you're using to um, do the makeup are not going to stick to the to the doll. So, so you want to do that. Now, you, then you want to do the makeup, and there are multiple things you can use. I use my Winsor and Newton watercolors. Um, I love these. These are the highest quality. Um, they have very good light fastness, so they're not going to like fade on you. Um, another thing a lot of people use and that I use as well that I purchased is um, soft pastels. So this is a very good quality one as well. I like to buy good quality tools because, you know, these dolls are going to be out in the sunlight getting their photos taken. So you don't want to get something that's going to fade as soon as it gets in the sunlight. So basically, uh, here they are. It's a really nice set, it has a lot of colors. You can use the pinks uh, for blush and lips and then the browns for the shadows and you know, things like that. Um, I also do art, I paint. So I figured I can use this to do some pastel painting as well. So luckily I had a lot of tools and supplies because I I do paint and I did scrapbook, so I have a lot of different stuff already available to me so I didn't have to buy as much as, you know, some people might have to buy if you're starting out completely new in the hobby. Um, the other thing that I use to do the face up are were these pencils. Um, this is a full set of really good quality, again, Prismacolor professional pencils. Um, so, yeah, so these are the Prismacolors. So I use that to do like eyebrows and freckles and things like that. Um, I also use acrylic paints and I didn't even try to bring those because there's, I have way too many of those. So there's acrylic paints as well. Um, so, and in between doing the various layers of pastels and other stuff, you want to keep spraying with it. And then when you're totally done doing the makeup, spray again. Um, and like I said, you can customize the back plate as well and also seal it with this. Another thing I have is glossy medium sort of stuff for um, acrylics. And I like to put that on the lips to make them a little bit glossy when I'm done with them. So the next thing you're gonna do is you take out the eye mechanism. You know, you've already taken it out, so you have to work on it. You wanna paint the eyelids. You wanna adjust um, the gaze. So you have to do a couple different things to lift the gaze and to make it so that the eyelids don't show. Like right now, when her eyes are open, you can see a little bit of the eyelid. So you can do, carve away certain things inside that will modify that so that the eyelids don't show at all. Um, and you can also do it so that the gaze gets lifted. Like, let me show you what I mean by that. So as you can see right now, her gaze is kind of looking down. If you lift the gaze, she'll be looking slightly upward. And depending on how much you carve away and how much you, um, take away from the T-bar that's inside, that will determine how lifted the gaze is. So once you've done that, the other thing you have to do is you wanna pop out these eye chips and put in your own eye chips that you can either purchase online or make yourself. So here are some options for eye chips. 
And again, you can buy these on Amazon or, you know, shop around and whatever. There's ones, these are kind of plastic ones or acrylic ones with different eye holes already or um, irises already in them. And then these are glass ones. So with these ones, I like to hand paint them so you get like a sparkly sort of effect. And, you know, you can use it, either use regular acrylic paint or metallic acrylic paint. If you use metallic, it will give it a nice sparkle in the sunlight. I've done gold ones and purple ones, and, and they do come out very pretty. And then with these glass ones, you can use, um, you can on Etsy purchase a printout or purchase a download and then print it out yourself. So... Um, and then you glue the glass ones to it. And you can use several different glues I will share with you. You can use this glue. That's how this one looks. You, this is diamond glaze. That's that right there. You can use um, tacky glue, Aline's tacky glue. And that's actually that one right there. And I've also, I had this from Scrapbooking Days or from Mixed Media Projects. Uh, these are Glossy Accents by Ink Essentials, and that's this one. So I tried all three. I didn't see much of a difference. I slightly preferred the Glossy Accents, so I went ahead and attached a lot of the eyes using that. Here they are. So then you just cut them out and you glue them in. Now here's an example of this, this eye didn't come out well, there was some kind of like, I don't know what was going on with it. So it didn't come out well, so you can peel it off and so you don't waste that, you use some kind of, you know, like, um, like a adhesive remover to get rid of the, you know, uh, glue and the paper that's still attached to the back. So if you want to buy some of that, that way you don't waste the stuff because it's not cheap. <laughs> so um, that will save you some money. Um, okay, so you painted that. The next thing you want to do is you need to do new eyelashes. So you want to buy some eyelashes. So you pull out their old eyelashes, stick the new ones in. You know, obviously uh, glue them in. Um... Also, you're going to do sleepy eyes, which means you take out the spring in the back and you change the mechanism so that their eyes can be closed. And then you, you buy some string of this type. Basically, it's the same as this one, but, you know, you can have fun with different colors. Um, so now, instead of one string coming out the back, you're going to have two strings coming up at the back. Because you see there's that um, spring you're taking that out and you're inserting two strings instead. Um, so you need new strings. And um, also in the back, obviously, you know, this is what it comes with. But one other option is some nice beads. I have a whole setup. I have a lot of different beads. And I had a bunch from scrapbooking days. But, you know, so for example, here's some beads. So you attach that in the back and you can, um, you can do that. You can also do some charms. Um, you can really have fun with it and decorate it and kind of make, you know, your own sort of, you know, just have fun with it. Do whatever you like. Um, and last thing, you know, now you can like kind of reassemble her. And last thing is obviously you have to do the hair. Like, you know. This is crazy hair. This is like, it's soft and beautiful, but there's just way, it's too too fluffy, too much. Too much is going on here. So you might want to purchase scissors that do thinning. This is to thin the hair out, and this is to, to cut hair. These are actual like hair scissors. Um, you might want to curl it or not. You know, you want a hairbrush to brush their hair. And there are like lots of YouTube tutorials on how to do their hair as well. So um, I think that's about it. Then you reassemble her and then obviously you want to, you know, either make some outfits or purchase some outfits to dress her up in, some shoes. And then you, um, she's ready to go. 
you know, if you're into making clothes, you can certainly have a lot of fun with it, get very creative. Um, I haven't really gotten to that. <laughs> I do have a sewing machine, but I still haven't gotten around to actually making clothes. So like I said, here's my website if you want to check out some previous dolls I've customized and sold. And I'll be working actually on this girl next, I think. Um, she has kind of a beautiful peachy pinkish hair, so I'm going to have some fun with that. And um, if you guys have any questions, let me know. I know I like went really fast through this video. I just wanted to fit a lot in. That's pretty much the entire process and everything you will need to customize a doll for yourself or, or to sell. So uh, I think I've included pretty much everything. There is nothing else you would need. And um, so like I said, if you have any questions, let me know and I can do other tutorial videos or how-to videos about Blythe dolls or, you know, anything else if you want. So let me know. Thank you for watching. Bye.